hello everyone welcome back to andrina's creations in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to customize your own dollar tree dry erase boards and i know everyone's been doing them lately but everyone's doing them with sublimation so i want to bring this video out for you guys for those that don't do sublimation just yet because you are still able to make them and you see we even are going to laminate them and they are double-sided so are you ready to learn i hope you guys are excited as i, as I am to teach you how to make them and let's get started oh and the tip is that because we are going to laminate them you are able to write on them all right guys so are you ready let's go okay for your supplies you are going to need i'm going to use a black car stock so i can trace the paddle so all you're going to have to do is put your paddle on top of your car stock and you're going you're going to open your paddle and of course you need your paddle from these are from the dollar tree dry erase paddles these are in the um, educational aisle for the kids so you're just going to put your paddle on top of your cardstock and you're going to go around and trace it with a pencil or pen of your choice I am going to be using cardstock to print my images this is just 65 pound cardstock you can use thicker paper you can use any paper of your choice today I'll be using 65 pound cardstock to print my images that are going to go on top of the paddle you are going to need a pair of scissors. You are going to need your laminating sheets, thermal laminating pouch sheets, and you're going to need them at least bigger than eight by 11. Again, you don't have to do this step. You can just print your images and put them on top of your paddles. But if you want to have that shiny look and you want the kids to be able to draw on top of the paddles, you are going to need thermal laminating pouches sheets. And I got these from Walmart, but you can also get them from Amazon and these are the scotch brand, but you can get any brand of your choice You're going to need your erasable markers This is just a dry erase marker that I have here around my house, but you can get any of your choice And you are going to need I'm going to be using the parchment sheets So parchment paper sheets so my laminating sheets don't get stuck on my heat press and uh yeah so i got this from amazon as well these are 9 by 13 parchment sheets and i am going to be using a teflon sheet it's optional but i like to always always protect everything that i'm heat pressing so i'm going to use a teflon sheet again i got this one from um amazon as well you are going to need a heat press i'll be using a heat press i haven't used a heat gun um you can feel free to use anything of your choice again i'm just showing you specifically what i'll be using but if you want to use a heat gun go ahead and feel free to do so i'll be using a heat press i have a 15 by 15 heat press and a 16 by 24 i'm just going to use my 15 by 15 heat press and you're going to need a printer to print your images um if you want to create your own template you are going to need a printer that has a scanner and i will be showing you how to make your own template and your software of choice yeah i know i'll be using silhouette studio so let's get started so you're going to take the paddle out of the plastic again with a pencil or pen you are going to trace going to hold it down and then you're going to trace all around once you trace it all around you are going to cut your template out once you cut it out, it's going to look like this. Now, you can even uh, just scan the actual paddle. Sometimes the thing about actually scanning some items is because, as you can see, it's kind of like thick and 3D. Sometimes when you scan it, it might catch that shadow if it makes sense. Like, it might catch that shadow and it's giving it a little bit more dimension. But you can do either or. You can either scan your paddle or you can scan what you just traced. So I have an Eco Tank 16600. I do have a scanner. Prior to this printer, I had a uh, Epson Workforce 7710 and a 7720, and they all had a scanner. As long as you have a scanner, you can scan anything into your computer. So um, with my printer, all I have to do is connect my USB drive right here, right there, and let me go ahead and do that. All printers are different, so if you don't know how to work your scanner, feel free to read your printer's manual. Or uh, if you don't, if you lost the manual, go ahead and go to YouTube or Google the specific printer that you have and how to scan. I connected my USB drive there, so then um, I will just go to the scan, 
and I am going to scan it to a memory device, which is the USB drive that I connected. You're going to go through your settings. I'm going to leave it just like that color to PDF. And then I am just going to place my, um, what I just traced into my scanner. I have all these papers here that came with the printer. So I'm just going to place it. Make sure it's kind of straight. And once you place it there, you are going to bring this down. Follow the steps. I'm going to click on save. Then last original. And then it's already saved to my USB drive. Once it's saved to my USB drive, I'm going to connect my USB drive to my laptop. Laptop or computer, because I know a lot of people always ask me, what can I do this in a computer? Guys, laptop and computer is almost the same thing, okay? It's, it's the same thing, so don't keep getting confused. So I'm going to be using my laptop, so I'm going to connect it to my laptop. You also need to make sure that you measure your paddle, so you can use a measuring tape. Going to measure the height and the width on inches, but if you don't know how to tell this kind of measurement, I highly recommend investing on a We Are Memory Keeper scoreboard and paper tripper if you are a continuing subscriber you already know i use this almost in all my videos so it has the measurements as one four three four seven eight and stuff like that so all you have to do is flip this around and you're going to line your paddle right flush there and then look at the measurements where does it stop then you're going to turn it around and write your measurements. Then if you don't know how to write it um, on your computer, so let's say it's let's say it's three and three fourths. If you don't know how to type three fourths into your software, all you have to do is go to Google and check what is three fourths um, to type into the computer. And then you take this measurement. So basically, like if it was three and one fourth, you will have to type three point two five. If it was three and a half, it will be three point five. OK, so. You could just do a quick Google search, right? And if you're in my Facebook crafting group, Andrina's Creations Crafting Lounge, TJ, my admin, made us the conversion chart. So if you are in my group, you can just easily print out that conversion chart, okay? So after you measure and all that stuff, now we're going to go into our software. Again, you are going to use the software of your choice. I am going to be using Silhouette Business Edition basic edition is free i have a whole link down below on how to download silhouette basic edition for free but i highly recommend getting business edition because you have all the different icons and it is a one-time payment i also have my affiliate link down below from swing design where you can get it for cheaper usually original price is a hundred dollars but on swing design they usually have it for 60 again it is a one-time payment and you do not need a cutting machine to use this software and technically for even this paddle you don't even need a cutting machine you are going to cut it out by hand all right so again i have silhouette business edition version 4.4 even if you have basic edition you can still do this okay first thing you need to do is go to your icon on your right it is the first icon is called the page setup it looks like a piece of paper if you do not know the names of the icons that I'm mentioning, all you have to do is put your mouse over your icons and then you're going to see the names, okay? So you're going to go to the first icon, which it looks like the paper. You're going to click on it and where it says media size, you're going to change it to 8 by 11 because you are going to be printing on 8 by 11 paper. People always ask me why doesn't it look right. Always make sure that you are changing your media size. That is the paper size you are going to be printing. Now, on transparency, I have mine on zero. Some people have it on 100, so it is transparent. I like mine on zero because I like to see the white paper, okay? Your next step is you need to go get the scan that you scan into your USB drive. So you're going to go to File. You're going to go to Merge. And you are going to look for whatever you say this. So I'm going to click on my USB drive folder. And mine is called Epson Scan Folder. I'm going to click on it. And then I am just going to drag or just click on it and click on OK. And here is the scan that I scanned. 
I am just going to click on it, hold my shift key. There's a green button here and I'm just going to rotate it. Reason why I'm holding the shift key is so everything stays straight. Now you have two options. You can trace this in silhouette or you can remove the white background using remove BG. I also have a separate tutorial on how to remove uh, backgrounds using remove BG. Sometimes I like using remove BG because it gives it a more cleaner look. And if you have version 4.4 in silhouette uh, business edition, automatically when you bring in a transparent background image, it automatically traces the image for you. So I'm actually going to show you both options. So I am just going to size this to 8 by 11. And I just have my image selected up here where it says width. It says 8 by 11. And then the height, I'm going to size um, sorry, I gotta do it. So the width is 11 and the height is Okay, I'm just gonna click on it I'm gonna go to my transform panel and I'm going to click on center so it could center it to the page But I'm actually gonna bring it down a little bit more Just like that now if you have business edition you can go to file you can go to merge and uh, you, Sorry you're going to go to file, you're going to go to save as, save to hard drive, click save as type as a JPEG, and then you are going, I think I already have it saved anyways. So it's uh, right here, saved as a JPEG. Once you have it saved, all you have to go do is go to remove BG. Click on remove BG, go to upload image, look for wherever you saved it. Once you upload it, you will see that it has gray and white rectangles behind it. That means now it is a transparent background and do not have the white background behind it. You're going to download this and save it to your uh, computer. Once you save it, you're going to go back into Silhouette and you are going to go to File. You're going to go to Merge and you are going to look for the image that you just saved and then click on OK. And here it is with no transparent background. But as you can see, it has a red outline around it and it was automatically traced for you. Again, if you have version 4.4, when you bring in a transparent background image, it automatically gets traced for you. And what does that mean? That I could go to my fill panel and I could color it any color of my choice and I could start designing this paddle. The other way was that you are able to just uh, trace it right here in uh, Silhouette. So you will go to your trace panel on your right, click select trace area, make a rectangle around your image, wait till it turns yellow, Go up your threshold, so all those lines. And if you look closely, you can see that those lines are not perfect. Sometimes that's why I just like to remove the white background from Remove BG. This is too much, as you can see, it's um, fuzzy, so bring down the threshold. And then you could just click on Trace. You're going to delete that from your... Click on the image, click Delete on your keyboard, and now you are left with this traced image, and you're able to just color this, all right? So those are two different options. I'm just going to delete one. Remember those measurements that you measured in uh, on your scoreboard or with your measuring tape? You're going to click on your paddle and make sure you type that width and that height. Okay. Now, if you do not know how to type some of those measurements, all you have to do is go to Google and put three, four, Three fourth as a decimal, and then it will tell you right here it will be 0 0.75. So let's say it was four and three fourth, you will type 4.75. Okay, hope that helps. So don't forget to add those measurements. Sometimes you also have to tweak some of your templates. So, how do I mean tweak it? Is probably you're missing just a little bit of a curve here, or sometimes you have to 
thin out something yes i understand we scanned it but sometimes it's not so perfect so what you will do is you will go grab a circle from your shapes on your left and i'm just going to make any size circle i'm going to color it black and i am going to right click and send it to the back and i'm just going to let me zoom in and sometimes you have to adjust it and you can use your arrow keys from your keyboard as well and let's say that's only the little bit that you needed you're going to click somewhere here on your screen drag your mouse to select both and how do you know both things are selected is you see there's a rectangle a square around my circle and there's a rectangle around my paddle so you know both things are selected i'm going to right click and weld when i weld it now that extra piece was added there okay that's how you will do your own template then you're gonna print it out and see if it fits on your paddle if it doesn't fit then just keep adjusting your measurements so you're gonna go up here to your width and type right now is at 5.77 but you can go to 5.76 5.74 keep adjusting as you would like until it fits for your liking all right after you do all that now you're going to start designing if you want to purchase the template that i made um you just go to andrinascreations.com it's only one dollar and if it doesn't fit uh if it if it doesn't fit exactly on your paddle you're still gonna have to adjust this one but i did add the little fixings on the sides and stuff like that already and i'm okay with this size as of now but again all paddles are not made equally guys so you still might have to do adjustments right now this one is 9.748 in height and the width is 7.98 again if you would like to purchase this one it is on my website andrinascreations.com i'm only going to provide the silhouette template because it is too big anyway to print through cricut okay so now let's get started with the designing if you watch all my videos you should be already kind of familiar on how to design it's always the same steps i am going to go to google and um i am going to look for mm, i think i i'm going to look up mermaid under the seat background i'm going to click on images i'm going to click on one i'm going to right click and copy the image go into silhouette right click and paste now you are also able to purchase any of your backgrounds. You can go to Etsy, you can go to Creative Fabrica, you can go to Mooshka, anywhere you would like, that's where you're going to get your backgrounds. I'm going to click on my background, right click and send to the back and I'm going to make sure that I expand it. How do I expand it? I um, just pull from the corners, okay? And I'm going to put it wherever you would like. I'm going to click here on my screen, drag my mouse to select both. I'm going to go to the modify panel and I'm going to click on crop. Once I crop, that image is already there. I'm actually going to right click and duplicate because we are going to be doing a front and back. All right. Once you do that, I am actually going to go to Muchka. I am affiliated with Muchka. And I'm going to type her website here. And if you use the code Andrina, O capital A and D R I N A, you get an extra 20% of your entire purchase. And I looked up mermaids and I'm just going to purchase some of her mermaids images. I've been have them, but I just want to show you guys. All right. So you can just look in here and um, purchase any of your images if you would like some of hers. Then after you pay for it and you download it, you're going to go to file. You're going to go to merge and then you are going to look for wherever you save those images. if um right now probably you do not have the funds to buy anything and you just want to try it out you can just go to google and look up mermaid png png means that they are a transparent background image so if you click on an image and you see that it has 
white and gray squares behind it that means it is a transparent background it does not have a background all you have to do is right click and save this image to your computer and then you are going to go back to your silhouette you're going to go to file and you're going to go to merge and then you're going to click on the image that you would like as you can see png images do not have a background okay as you all know i told you before version uh, 4.4 automatically traces an image a png image that you bring into silhouette so you will see some red outlines around it that means it was traced so all you have to do is make sure your image is selected you're going to go to your outline icon and you're going to go to the second option and you're going to remove that red outline color just by selecting the rectangle the square that has the lines going over it and that means it's going to remove that red outline you're just going to size your images and you're going to put as many images of your choice. You are going to design this however you want. These could be for baby showers. These could be for birthday parties, uh, memorial services, uh, graduation ceremonies, wedding ceremonies. Um, if you have kids that you want to do um, educational items on here, uh, anything of your choice, you're going to design it however you would like, okay? How do you type in silhouettes? You're going to click the A on your left, A on your right. You're going to select the font of your choice and you can download free fonts from thefont.com. I have a separate tutorial on how to download fonts. Anytime you download fonts, you need to make sure the software is completely closed. And then once you open it, all your fonts should be there. So I'm going to click here on my screen and I'm going to start typing. Now, once I'm done uh, typing, I'm going to click somewhere else to get off the edit mode. I'm going to click on it again, and I'm just going to color it so you can see the colors. All right. Um, as you can see, it also has a red outline, so I'm going to go to the outline color. And I'm actually going to bring that up to a 1 because I do want an outline color. And I'm going to color that black. And let me just change the colors of the font to maybe white. Okay. Now right now i'm still able to change the font if i wanted to so if i have this font and i go back to the a i'm able to switch the fonts as you can see right but once you um ungroup it it's no longer a font you, you do not need to ungroup it i want to ungroup it because i'm going to be putting the name and everything in separate places so i'm going to right click and ungroup it now you see that everything is individual. The A is by itself, the R is by itself, everything's by itself. So I'm gonna click here somewhere on my screen. I'm going to drag my mouse to select the entire name, right click and group it. I'm going to actually just select the T and the H and make it smaller. Now I'm going to select everything, right click and group it and select the entire word birthday, right click and group it. Now. I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to go back to my fill um, icon that looks like a paint palette and I'm going to color it the color pink. If you do not like any of these colors that Silhouette provides, you have a dropper right here. You can click on the dropper and you can bring it near your image to select a color to change your words or any shape or anything you want to change a color of. If you have an image here that you still don't like those colors, you can go to Google and you can search up a let's say pastel color palette click on images and you're going to click on one you're going to right click copy the image go into silhouette right click and paste you have the zoom in and the zoom out button right here so it's the plus sign and the minus sign that's how you zoom in and out and in silhouette, you are able to work all around your um, gray area. Don't think that you only have to work here. You can zoom out and have all this area to work. Okay, so I have these colors here. So let's say the number um, five, I want it to be like a purple color. I'm just going to click on it, click, go to my fill panel, click on the dropper, and I'm going to click on the purple from in here. And you see my number five change color. All right. You're going to place everything where you will want it to go.
and the name of this font is called bubble love i got it from the font.com all right once you're satisfied on how everything looks again you're going to add anything of your choice i'm going to click here somewhere on my screen drag my mouse around everything right click and group this together and all this is done now i'm going to grab the second paddle this is going to be the back you do not need to do front and back you can do whatever you want you can even add the same image in the front and the back but i am going to be making this one as an activity so i'm going to go back to google and i'm going to look up under the c activity sheets i am going to look for whichever i want i'm going to click on one i'm going to right click copy the image go into silhouette right click and paste it i am going to go get a second one right click copy image go into silhouette and paste it I'm just going to put this one here right next to it and I'm going to size it down. I'm going to select them both right click and group it together and then i'm just going to put it in the middle of my paddle once you are satisfied on how everything looks you can even make your own you just have to put a white rectangle right here add your own images if you go to google or whatever and get your png images you can type whatever you want you can create anything you want add your own images again you are your own designer do it however you would like all right next is i'm going to select here and right click i mean select everything right click and group so my second paddle is done all right so this is the front and this is the back the reason why that I said it doesn't even matter about doing a print and cut with your machine is because this is already big enough. When you turn on your registration marks in your page paper icon, which is the page setup, you're going to click on it. You're going to go to your third option and you're going to turn on your registration marks and I'm going to bring up my thickness. As you can see, everything that's outside of your red rectangle, your machine is not going to cut. So you're going to have to manually cut that out by hand and make sure that none of your design is touching the registration marks, those black lines. OK, so you're going to have to probably bring it down and you're going to more than likely have to tilt a little bit. And make sure everything fits. I am going to just cut it by hand, so I'm going to turn off my registration marks. And then you're going to print. How do you print? You're going to go to your printer icon up here. You're going to select print. You're going to select the printer that you have. I have an EcoTank 16600. I'm going to go to preferences. I like to print from the back tray. So it's called paper source paper tray. Document size 8 by 11. You need to make sure that everywhere you have to put the same paper size in three different areas. In the page setup. In your printer um, setup and on your printer three different times okay so right here this is my second one eight by eleven paper type i like to print on presentation paper mats and i'm going to click on okay and i'm going to print okay once i print this one i'm going to add my front one i'm going to do the same steps and print that one out all right so remember the first place that you had to change your uh, paper size was here on media size then in your printer icon and on your printer all right now this is a bonus a lot of people always ask how do we do mock-ups so i am going to do a quick mock-up for you guys i am going to put these two here on the side because i need to maintain these correct size because we need to print that size i'm going to right click and duplicate these both and what is a mock-up a mock-up is a picture that you will show your customer how does the items look or if you want to advertise them these you are going to put them all around your social media to show people that now you are offering them 
do i recommend mock-ups no because a lot of people just want to show mock-ups and then when it's time to actually make the item they don't know how to make it unless you actually know how to make the items then yes you can do a mock-up all right so i am going to go to google and i am going to look up a wood background you can choose any background of your choice. I'm going to click on images. I am going to select a background. Right click, copy, go into silhouette, right click and paste. I'm going to have that image selected. I'm going to type on my width 8.5 and on my height 11. I'm going to right click and send it to the back. And I'm going to have it selected and make sure I go to my transform panel and click on center so it can be centered to page. All right. I'm going to zoom in so you are able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to select both of these paddles. I'm going to click on one, hold my shift key, click on the other one, and I'm just going to make them smaller. This is the reason why I said to duplicate it. To make sure that you're not making these smaller without uh, before printing. I'm going to bring this one to the front. So this one could be. No, I'm actually going to bring this one to the front. All right. And then you can just tilt them. Um, I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. okay you're gonna put it however you want um you are going to grab a rectangle or whatever of your choice i'm just gonna put it right here on the top i'm going to color it maybe pink and i'm just gonna click on the a on my right a on my left and start typing As you can see, I want everything in one line. So before I get off the edit mode, I'm just going to drag this line so everything could be in one line. And there you have it. I'm going to color this white. For, or you can color any color of your choice, okay? You're also going to add your logo. If you do not have a logo, just add your name, but make sure you watermark it. How would you add it? You're going to go to file, you're going to go to merge, and you're going to look for wherever you have your logo saved. And you are going to add it wherever you choose. Now, I also highly recommend putting your logo like everywhere and how would you do that is I'm going to move this to the side and I'm actually going to select everything here, right click and group it and move it to the side. You're going to put your logo as small as you want right at a corner of this page and you're going to go to your transform panel, sorry, no replicate panel and you're going to click where it says fill to page. As you can see, it's, it filled the entire page. I'm going to select everything, right click and group it. And I am going to click on this mockup that we were doing. And I'm going to go to my transform panel and click on center. As you can see, this is how it's looking right now. Now, if you click on your logo, go to your fill panel that looks like the paint palette and where it says transparency, bring it down. And now your logo is everywhere as you can see now i don't like it when it's over like on what you're saying that your image or your um, design is so i'm actually going to click on my mock-up and right click and ungroup it 
and I'm going to click on the purple rectangle, click where it says custom paddle. I'm going to select the word, hold the shift key, click on the purple uh, square, right click and group it. And I'm going to right click and bring it to the front just so it's in front of the um, watermark. I don't want that to be watermark. I want everybody to see what it is. And then there you have it. Now, if you are selling just the files and you want to put like the word PDF or um, JPEG or whatever you want to put there or just digital file, um, you know, whatever you want to keep typing on here, great for birthday parties, whatever you choose, you can keep on typing here. Um, how would you save this as a PDF file if you want to sell this to a customer? I always recommend selling it as a PDF file because your uh, fonts are not going to change the size is not going to change so all the customers have to do is open up the pdf and print that's all they have to do and also if you do not have a printer at home that's how you're going to save it you're going to save it as a pdf file so when you go over there to print somewhere else it's already everything set for you so you go to file you go to save as save to hard drive where it says save as type you're going to click on portable document format that means pdf and you're going to name your file okay you can only save as a pdf file if you have business edition i do have a separate tutorial on how to save pdf files if you have the basic edition but again i highly recommend business edition how would you save your mock-up you just go to file you go to save as save to hard drive and you can just save this as a jpeg and then you're going to upload this to your Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want to upload it to. If let's say you don't have those options, but you still want to show a mock-up to a customer and you don't have the option to save as a JPEG, um, if you have Windows, you have the snippet tool that you can take a screenshot of, of your screen. And all you have to do is click, hold down the shift key, hold your Windows key and hold your S key and let it go. And this will appear and then you get this arrow and you are going to make a rectangle on what exactly you want to take a screenshot of. You're going to let it go and it's a screenshot and if you click on here, you'll see this is the screenshot that you took and then you will save this. All right. Well, I hope all these tips help. Now let's go ahead and print and put this on the paddles. Okay, once you print your images, you're going to glue them to your paddles. Now use the glue of your choice. I'll be using my own glue. Um, but what I highly recommend is gluing the edges really, really good because this is what's actually going to adhere to your paddles. Your thermal laminating sheets is going to adhere to the image. So if that makes sense. So if this is not adhered correctly, then everything's going to come off. So I'm going to go around with my own glue all around and then glue it right on top. And you're going to do the front and the, or the back, either or, but do one at a time. Making sure that everything aligns correctly. Now, again, remember I told you guys that all paddles are not made equally, so you still might have to trim a little bit off. As you can see, I am going to have to trim just a little bit off. And all you have to do is go with your pair of scissors and just trim off whatever is extra. Okay, it's not a big deal. Don't overthink it that you can't do it. Just go ahead and trim the extra okay okay once you're done trimming everything that you had to trim all around um now we're going to laminate and remember i only glued the front part i haven't glued the back yet we're going to do one at a time you're going to grab one of your laminating pouches and you are going to split it in half so remember this is how it was called so if you were putting it through your laminator machine you know that your paper whatever you was going to laminate goes in the middle so you know this rougher side is the one that's going to adhere 
to the top of your paddle, okay? So make sure you put it the right way. I have my heat press on 380 for 24 seconds, so we're going to probably do 15 to 20 seconds. Again, all heat presses are also different, so depending on how much your heat press heats up, you're going to put it for that. But I have mine on 380, so I put some parchment paper in the bottom. We're just going to put our paddle on the top. And this is, again, an extra step. You could just leave it just like this. You can even Mod Podge on top. You can put acrylic sealer on top. But because I want the kids to be able to write on it, that's why I'm going to laminate it. But if you design this a different way, you won't have to laminate it. But I do like the laminating look. Okay, so remember, you need to make sure that... Also make sure that your laminating sheet is clean, no fuzz, no debris on it. That rough side has to be touching my laminate my paddle. And this is why I have the parchment paper in the bottom because this is going to adhere to the parchment paper on the bottom. So I have it like that. And I'm going to put more parchment paper on the top. I know this is extra, but it's just me trying to protect everything that nothing messes up. And I'm actually going to put the Teflon sheet on top as well. You can get Teflon sheets from Amazon. I'll have everything linked down below. All right. And then we are just, I'm going to push it in and bring my heat press over. And I am going to press. I'm gonna leave it for 20 seconds to 15 seconds. Um, usually when we record numbers, you're gonna see that, so that's why I'm not showing you the numbers, but it's on 380, and I'm going to press it for 15 to 20 seconds. Sorry, yeah, right in front of the heat press. All right, so I'm gonna move that to the side. And you're going to see it's hot, so be careful. Let it cool off just for a minute. Make sure it's all adhered all around. I'm actually going to go just a little bit right here. I think it's good everywhere. I'm just going to press it really, really here just for like two seconds. All right, now you can go around with an X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors. I'm going to use a pair of scissors and like again, you just going to cut all around. That's all you have to do. Remember, it's kind of hot, so be careful. Do not get burnt. And you're just going to go all around and cut everything out, all right? All right, once you are done cutting out your laminating sheet, now you're going to glue the other part here. You're going to glue it your design and we're going to repeat the same steps So here it is guys, the final result. Don't mind the wind guys, it is kind of windy outside, but here's the front, here's the back. They're both double sided. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please comment down below any other videos you would like to see from me. If you are trying these paddles out, don't forget to join my Facebook crafting group and Genius Creations Crafting Lounge. You need to answer all three questions to get approved. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified every time I upload new videos. And hold on guys, because I have to show you the final thing that you are able to do with them. So because we did put the laminating sheets, they are able to write with the dry erase markers. And then they're able to erase it.
And you know, I always like to ask you questions. So today's question is, comment down below, what is your favorite Disney princess? All right, I like the interaction. You know, the more interaction you guys do in my videos, the more the algorithm will push our videos out. So don't forget, comment below, what is your favorite Disney princess? All right, guys. Well, I'll talk to you guys later. And of course, you know, I always say, I hope everyone's having a blessed day. Bye-bye.